Good morning, everybody. I just had a false start where I forgot to hit record, but due to St. Anthony, I remembered only a few seconds in, so it's all good. So we have the audio recording and I have the video recording and it's just nine o'clock in the morning, so I'd call that a win. So I'm doing really well this morning. How are you? It's a beautiful late, late June day here in Western New York. I have a busy day um, on the reference desk like right at the lunch hour and I have to leave immediately thereafter to take Henry to the dentist and um, on my way to that I need to stop and run an errand pick up some um, some things some clothes that I got for Ann and I and so yeah it's just been just been like that um, and I have dinner plans this evening with some friends from college and I haven't seen them in a couple months. So, so that'll be nice. But it's like super busy, super busy. Uh, and this morning at 6.01, I hear, mom, could you come in here? Which is Anne serenading me from her little bedroom down the hall. And she knows that, <laughs> well, when I went in there, she said, is it morning time? I said, no. <laughs> I suppose technically it was morning time, but we didn't need to get up for at least another 30 to 40 minutes. And she knows that unless there's a seven, it's the first number on her clock, that she should not make noise. Or, you know, I mean, she can play in her room if she wants, but she shouldn't get the rest of the house up. But she, that has been a convenient little brain cell that she has forgotten about. So I talked her into dozing for a little bit, and then I went back and laid down, which felt like a victory. But you know how it is. It, I can't. There's no way I can go back to sleep. But it's still, I just wanted to lay there because I could. So why not? Um, so that was the beginning of our morning. I feel a little tired, but, but I'm in a good mood, especially considering all the running around I have to do in a little bit. Um, Fourth of July weekend here in the U.S. is coming up and I'm excited about that. It's a nice three-day weekend because the holiday falls on a Monday this year and so I'm looking forward to relaxing and um, having some time with Mike and the kids. We're gonna I think take the kids to see a movie, maybe that pet movie that I cannot remember the name. It might just be called Pets or something like that. The Life of Pets maybe. And we're going to go see my parents and probably swim if it's not raining in their pool. The kids always love that. And we're going to go see fireworks, which in our village is, I believe, Sunday night. So it'll be very pleasant. It'll be very pleasant. And I'm hoping to do lots of reading and knitting and all that good stuff. So, all right. So our topics for today, reading and intercessory prayer. <laughs> it's always an eclectic mix here. Um, so I've been reading, reading away. So I happen to have my Kindle with me today, so I thought that I would introduce you to Francis. So, um, so this is my Kindle cover, and um, I didn't pay to have the ads removed, so I have a little screensaver where they're always trying to sell me other books. So this is my little home screen here of my uh, my current books in progress. You'll notice that there are four. <laughs> That's typical for me. I'm almost always reading multiple books at one time. I've just always on that. I like to be able to pick what I feel like on any given point in time. So um, I can link to all of these in our our show notes, but what I have ongoing is down at the bottom there is a book called uh, Women of the Bible, and that's a Bible Bible study that I'm in with uh, in a Facebook group with some friends, and this reminds me that I am behind for this week. We're taking next week off. It's the holiday because some people are going on vacation and such, so I can catch up. I need to catch up, but it goes through, uh, has a different woman each week from the Bible and each day of the work week, there's a discussion, a short reflection story and um, some scripture verses that permeate the week and then questions that you can talk about each day. So I need to catch up on that. Um, the other things that I'm reading, you'll see there's Mother Angelica on the one side. I started her and I love her. I think I'm going to just wait to finish her until maybe the fall. I'm thinking of um, reading that with Christina in the fall. And right now we are both um, full up with the book Opposite Mother Angelica, which is the summer before the war. You see the lady on the bicycle. Um, so that's the planned, not scripted late summer book club. And so the skinny on that, if you are or would like to read along with us, 
This is a historical fiction, kind of Downton Abbey-esque, set right before the First World War, and uh, set in an English village about a Latin teacher um, who comes to town <laughs> um, to a, you know, then there's a wealthy family involved. And yeah, so um, we are going to be reading for July the first nine chapters. And we are going to be recording and putting out the podcast the week of July 11th. So we'll probably record maybe Tuesday of that week, something like that, Tuesday or Wednesday. So that would be the 12th or 13th. So you would see the podcast the 13th or 14th, maybe the 15th. So like right around that, so the end of that week. So if you're reading, that's your, um, your deadline, if you will. We're going to be talking about it for the second half of our show. And I am on chapter four. So after I finished Church of Spies, and um, if you haven't seen it yet, I see a couple comments already for Church of Spies. I will link to that. Um, we just finished up. I just posted yesterday about my thoughts on the end of the book, and I've had a couple of comments. Thank you um, to Delta Flute and Melanie for writing in. I know that there's a couple others of you that were planning on commenting when you get an opportunity, so I'm looking forward to reading those. And everybody had some really great thoughts to post on the end of the book. Um, Delta Flute had some very interesting, um, a family tie-in to her interest in Holocaust remembrance and, um, which is very touching to read. And I really enjoyed reading her thoughts and she was very knowledgeable about some of the, um, tidbits that I mentioned in my review as she's read a lot about, um, that period of history and, uh, knows a lot about it. So I really enjoyed reading her comments and Melanie also wrote in and, you know, summed up definitely the way that I felt about the book, which is that she's really glad she read it. It's a really important book. It wasn't something that she would have normally picked up on her own, only with the encouragement of a book club. So she's glad for that, but it was definitely a heavy read. <laughs> and so for the fall, um, she votes for, you know, just something different because we've, kind of covered this very important um, historical nonfiction realm. And so it would be nice to have something just to um, contrast with it in the fall. To have something a little different. So um, I agree. And so for the fall, we will be doing a poll and see what everybody wants to vote on. But for the choices, I'll almost certainly put up fiction, uh, maybe a, a smattering of both contemporary and um, historical fiction. And then in terms of nonfiction, something lighter like um, spirituality um, type stuff. So if you have any suggestions for specific books, please suggest them. Write to me in the comments and let me know, and I will include them in our options to vote, which will be sometime in August that we'll vote. So exciting stuff. All right, so I finished up Church of Spies, and I um, almost immediately started on the summer before the war, and it's it, I really like it so far. It's going well. It's going, I would say, pretty quick. The chapters are long, like my Kindle will tell me, Francis will tell me, um, when I start reading that I'll have uh, like 25 minutes it, it is estimating that I'll take to finish the chapter, but I'll finish it while I lay there in bed one night before I fall asleep. That's pretty impressive because I don't take that long to fall asleep. So yeah, it's, um, it's going really well. So I'm enjoying that and I'm optimistic that I'll have the nine chapters finished well before when we record the week of July 11th. And then we'll continue on with the middle segment for um, August. And then the other thing I have on Francis, you'll see right in the middle there, is a book called Liberation. So um, this is part of a series, and I'll link to the other posts that I've written about this series because it's a very meaningful series to me. I love the books. The series is called I Am Margaret, and the author is Karina Turner. And I've, I've written, there's four books in the series. The fourth book just came out. And so I, I wrote reviews of book books one and two, which are called I Am Margaret, and the second book is called The Three Most Wanted. Excellent. Catholic young adult fiction, dystopian, futuristic type stuff, and it, it's excellent. It, I mean, some of it is a little hard to read because, as you would imagine, sort of like with the Hunger Games, it's um, the dystopian future thing. So there's um, the government conducting these really evil and horrible things against kids and, and teenagers. And so it's it, like it's hard to um, to think about the things that sh that are described in the book that are happening to the um, some of the kids. Um, so it's like mature young adults, but certainly older teenagers would be 
gripped by these books and able to handle it. Excellent, excellent. Um, story, characters. I read the book so quickly because I, I am dying to see what happens next. The writing is wonderful. And I just, I am so taken with the story and the Catholic moral worldview. So I really do recommend these books. So I'm on book three and the publisher just contacted me asking if I would review book four. So therefore I need to read book three in quick order. I was kind of saving it because I didn't want the series to end. Um, so I need to read book three and then I'm going to read book four. So if you are interested in these books, they are available. I have links on Kindle for $7. And which I think is a very reasonable price for a fiction book. And I just do think it is so important for us to support Catholic authors like this, if you're interested in those types of books, um, so that, that publishers know that there's a market for this. So I really do highly recommend the series. So you'll see lots of links to that in the show notes. So I'm going to be reading those just informally, and I will post the review of book four when I, um, when I finish it this summer sometime. And so if you are interested in reading along, you can just start at the beginning of the series or whatever you'd like to do. You can go back and comment on my original posts if you'd like, or comment on this one, whatever you want, and tell me what you think, because I do think they are very thought-provoking, really good stuff. So I've got that. So reading, reading, reading. The other thing that I've been thinking a lot about is prayer and specifically praying for others, which seems like a very general topic, right? But what I'm thinking about is that I had mentioned, I think it was last week, that in the whirlwind of activities that is my life right now, prayer can very easily get pushed to the wayside. And I'm sure that applies to people in all different states of life. Um, if you're a, a student, you're um, uh, obviously a, like a wife and mother like me, maybe you're discerning a religious vocation and you're a working, you know, your full-time job, or um, you're a stay-at-home mom and you've got your kids, <laughs> um, or, you know, maybe you're involved in a lot of activities as an empty nester and you're, you're maybe you're working or you're retired but you know, you're taking on some new and exciting things in your life in all of these times we get busy and it's easy to let prayer kind of slip through our fingers and I have been talking about how I wanted to get back into a routine and I mentioned last week but I wanted to talk about in depth more today this notion of praying for others and that I'm doing this really fun thing right now then I'm going to call like a secret prayer Santa. And I just, I'm really loving this. So I thought I would share it with you if you were interested in doing it yourself. I have a group of friends and we were about to pray a novena. And so I came up with this idea. And it's nice to pray in community where you're like, oh yeah, I'm praying that too. Great. Or, you know, and so you, as I say the prayers each day, I think about the other people praying and it makes me feel happy, part of the body of Christ. And so I thought to myself, I was driving home from work one day. I do a lot of thinking in the car, probably because when I'm driving home from work, I'm by myself. <laughs> and so even if I'm listening to podcasts, my mind, my children aren't there. So my mind is free to just have thoughts and they're not interrupted. So I'm driving home and I'm thinking, and I thought, you know, I do, we do a secret Santa with my knitting group each year where we draw a name. I, I mean, obviously you know that it's going to be somebody within that small group, but you have a name and they don't know that you have them and somebody else has your name and you're knitting something for each other. And it's a surprise as to what it is, but you base it off of the person. So I thought of that with regard to this prayer novena group. And I thought, you know, we could draw like, and there's these random name generators like we use for the knitting secret Santa. You know, draw a random name and then you would be secretly praying for that person for the nine days and then at the end you'll have this big reveal um that it was you know me who was praying for so and so and then that other person was praying for me and, and it's just very sweet so you know that somebody's praying for you but you don't know who within your group and so i got home and i pitched the idea to my friends and they loved it and so i found a site and i'm linking to it in the show notes that is like a, like a gift exchange site um drawnames.com and there's tons of them out there so you can use any of those. But what I liked about this one was, and maybe the others aren't similar, but what it does is that, you know, you enter the exchange 
and you can create a wish list. So we put a wish list of our intentions that you would love for somebody to pray for those intentions for you on your behalf. And then the when everybody's done that, it generates the the, the draw and you'll get an email saying here's your name and so you click on it and it takes you to the per and it shows you the person that you are going to be praying for and their wish list of intentions for the novena and it's been really wonderful and I find and one of my friends in the group also noted the same thing when we're praying for somebody else we're so much more disciplined and that's a really great thing I don't let it fall by the wayside so much anymore when I get in the car in the morning I'm like, oh I want to I pick up my rosary and this is one of the rosaries I've been using thought I'd bring it in for show and tell. It says, um, St. Kateri, take it with us. I love her. And it's like a turquoise and, you know, southwest feel in the beads. My sister got this for me for Christmas a couple years ago. And so I've been using this rosary to pray. I actually have two St. Kateri rosaries and I use them both. <laughs> and I like to have rosaries so I can just pick them up wherever I happen to be at. And so I've been praying with St. Kateri quite a bit for my recipient. And so I get in the car, I'm like, oh yes, that's right, I want to pray for her. And it just, it makes me so much more motivated to, and then I, I love that we have that list of intentions. Like, oh, I like to get real, I mean, of course you can just pray, oh, I, I really want to pray for, um, you know, for Melanie, just generally, right, whoever it may be. But it, it is nice to know, like, okay, I know, I happen to know that my person has been struggling with this and so I pray about that specific intention and maybe she's had a couple of other things mentioned on there so, so I want to pray about this and she mentioned that that she's worried about that and so I pray about her having peace about X Y and Z and um, you know God showing her uh, the way so if she's discerning if she's anxious about something so she needs to discern um, and it's a really it's been really wonderful I've loved it so if that's something that you're interested in doing, I put the name of the website in there. So if you want to create your own secret prayer circle. <laughs> and then, you know, for we pray a novena monthly. So each time we can just, we can do this if we want to and uh, draw a different person. I love it. So that's been I'm just adding a little joy to my summer. So yeah, that's what's been going on with me. What's been going on with you? We're now going into July. Just can't even believe that. So what do you have planned if you are celebrating the holiday weekend here in the US? What do you have planned for the weekend? What are you gonna be doing? Uh, what are you reading? If you're reading along with me for anything, please do let me know. If you have book suggestions for the fall, I would love to hear those. Really, really love. So write in. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. And I will talk to you soon. Bye.